Welcome back to Sailing Floating Freedom. In this episode, we spend the weekend at Wallace Island. In our last episode, we explored Gibsons and anchored in Plumper Cove. Heading south from Nanaimo, the trip to Wallace Island would take about four or five hours. Okay guys, it's the next day. We're off to Princess Cove on Wallace Island. We slept on the boat last night, so we got a really easy breezy early start. Uh, we'll be up in like two, three hours. When we get there. Or when we get there, like, where do we leave? Uh, we're here. No, the dog's in there with me. But it's beautiful. It's a, we would like a little bit more wind, but nice day for being out on the water. Beautiful We'll be running with a current today, I believe, shooting through Dodd Narrows, so uh, that'll give us a little turbo boost. And uh, I think our ETA is right just after lunch or something like that, one o'clock? Yeah, it's around just over four hours to get there. Yeah. Just 20, yeah. 21 nautical miles. And uh, we may have a bit of a tailwind, so we're going to try to get the sails out, hopefully. It might slow us down, but we'll be sailing, and that's why we bought the boat. <laughs> Allegedly. But um, my retinas are currently burning through the back of my brain, so um, we're going to shut her down here. It's an absolutely stunning day here. We are not far from Wallace Island where we will anchor in Princess Cove if it's not too busy. Um, being the end of September, I don't anticipate that it will, um, but we are just having the most awesome September. And so we're gonna enjoy temperatures in the low 20s this weekend. And um, yeah, just really enjoy this, uh, probably last time out on the boat um, this season at least with these warm temperatures. So we're almost at Wallace Island. Salish Dancer just passed us a little bit ago, so they will beat us there. And uh, we'll check it out, and hopefully there'll be a spot for us. But it is just so gorgeous out here. No wind for sailing, unfortunately, um, but you can't complain when it's calm and beautiful like this. So we're just gonna soak it all up. for a stern tie. Yeah. Captain Matt. All right, so Will, when you get in the dinghy, we're gonna move the seat to the middle position so you can row. Okay. And then you are going to, you know, face backward yeah. so you can actually row properly and make your life easy. And there should be rings in the rock, so it should be dead simple to loop the rope through and bring it back. It doesn't look like we have any wind or current really to contend with, so. Got it. Should be pretty easy. You got it. Are we ready? I think so. Are we ready? It doesn't look too busy.
just off for a walk this morning on Wallace Island. Peggy went for a run and the dog is on her scent and pulling like it's a tractor pull right now. So he's dragging me through the forest. Uh, we just want to go explore a little bit. Behind me, we got the signs there. So, we want to go find this cabin where you can um, paint your own boat sign and hang it there. I guess there's like hundreds if not more. Um, so we're gonna go check that out. But beautiful spot here, the weather is incredible. Just the end of September here, rolling into October. Couldn't have asked for a better weekend. Beautiful spot. Like, look at the water behind me, it's like emerald green. Looks so cool. So there's two anchorages on Wallace Island. There's Conover Harbor, I guess, or Bay. Uh, pretty tight, there's a provincial marine park there and a dock. Um, I think you can anchor a couple boats in there, but for sailboats, you gotta be pretty careful because it gets pretty shallow. So we opted for Princess Cove, which is on the north end of the island. Lots of stern time opportunities there. You probably get maybe a dozen boats. A couple people are anchored at the mouth of the harbor coming in. And um, yeah, we stern tide close to the little dinghy dock, which is super convenient. Good morning. Out for a run on uh, Wallace Island this morning. And um, I ended up at Cornover Cove. We're in Princess Cove. <laughs> I meant to take a left back on the trail to go up the other side of the island, but you know, only me could get lost on an island this small. So I'm gonna backtrack and uh, try and find my turn and explore Wallace Island this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Couldn't ask for a nicer September morning. So I'm off. Look a sign! Cabin Bay, that's where I'm headed. Uh, or Shivers Point. Shivers Point is uh, the very tip um, of the island, and that is where I'm headed. So, Shivers Point. Let's go! Trying to find mom? Where is she? He is going to be worn out. I think this dog was a sled dog in a previous life. Mush! Mush! This leash is like a guitar string. Well, we just came across this little marshland. I guess we're about halfway over to the other side of the island. And check this out, a little uh, antique truck. Well, Keebs, where should we head off to? This is so incredible. There's gotta be hundreds and hundreds, if not more, uh, signs made for all these different boats and people that came to visit. Like the entire inside is covered as well as the outside. Even the floor, pieces of driftwood with people's and family and boat names. Curious how long this has been going on for, but yeah, I mean, you could spend hours and hours just looking through, even on the ceiling. Yeah, we definitely have to make our mark as well. 
Very cool. Check it out. Originally called Narrow Island, Wallace Island was renamed in 1905 and is 72 hectares in size. The first known resident was Jeremiah Chivers, who lived to the age of 92. The northern point of the island was named after him. In 1946, David Conover bought the island with his life savings and over several years built the Royal Cedar Cottages Resort. So, a bit of a casualty here on Floating Freedom this morning. Uh, just had our morning coffee and I went out and flew the drone, got some great shots. And on the way back, it started to glitch out a little bit and kept trying to drop itself out of the sky into the forest. Got it over the water within sight of where I could retrieve it. And it just kept dropping. I tried to get it to go up again. It would run for a little bit and then it just completely lost signal and it's in the water somewhere. So I think later on we're going to try to throw the wetsuit on and get some masks and maybe make a little game of it to try to at least recover the memory card. So, <laughs> bummer. See you later, 500 bucks. That's all I have to report for right now. Over and out. Over and out. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Well, we got our arts and crafts day going. We're creating our signs for the cabin. How's it going, Peg? Ah, just getting started. We'll William? Gooch. What are you going with today? Drop a gear and disappear. Drop a gear and disappear. I'm just doing the standard boat name, Floating Freedom. And I'll be working on the logo. So we each have our tasks. And then we may open it up to uh, the kiddos and Sailor Dancer to come over here and wreck the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're wild. Wild. <laughs> wild and crazy. Can I see your sign? One of our favorite things to do in the evening, take a sunset cruise. What a trip. Wallace Island did not disappoint. It was so cute and lots of trails to walk around with and explore. The weather was awesome. 
great company. Couldn't ask for anything more. We would definitely go back to uh, Princess Cove on Wallace Island. Easy. <laughs> Homeward bound. Well, another great trip coming to an end. That was pretty much a wrap for the 2022 season of Floating Freedom. It was a great year. We got out lots. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss our 2023 sailing season. It's free!